G'day folks. I figured I'd do a little video this afternoon on how to wire a single phase compressor that you've just found at the junkyard and accidentally uh, removed all the wires from your capacitor. Now, or, or simply just not noticed how it went together, like you've, all the wires are the same colour and you've just cut them all off. And this is relying on the fact that you've got some kind of markings on it to tell you what goes where. If you have absolutely no markings on it, like this foam gasket's missing and the plastic cover's missing and you've got no idea how it goes together, um, you might be in a bit of trouble. If it's a single phase compressor, you can ohm from common to each of the uh, start and run terminals, which is say common to, common to run and take a reading on ohms, common to start, take a reading and then compare the two, read from run to start and then they should, this reading should equal these two readings combined, added together. So if you try enough um, enough combinations, you might come up with something, but then if your compressor's half burnt out or damaged, there's no guarantee you'll get any kind of accurate reading. You'll always get errant readings on burnt up compressors. So if you've got a compressor out of a healthy working unit and you've completely lost your, um, say the gasket or whatever has the markings on it, in this case it has R for run, um, S for start up in the top corner there, and C for common. Uh, it's easy enough to tell you which terminal is which, but if you've lost it, you're going to be doing a bit of guesswork with a multimeter. Um, yeah, but I just had a video sent to me from a, uh, another YouTuber who just did the similar sort of thing. They ripped a compressor out of a unit. They don't have any markings on it. Oh, actually, they will have markings on it. I recognize the compressor, but they just don't know where to wire it up. They've got the plastic box with two caps in it. One cap was the fan capacitor, which you don't need. And one's exactly the same as this. So that's sort of where I'm going to go into the details on the caps, which I do not know exactly what cap goes with what compressor. If you didn't get the cap with your compressor, you might be in a bit of trouble. So get, if you're going to scrap an air conditioner for a compressor, unless it's three phase like this one, make sure you get the cap with it. It's always the biggest one out of the lot. I uh, rarely see a unit with a bigger fan cap than a run cap or, or a compressor cap, but either way, get both of them if you have to. And some of them even have the fan cap built into the um, compressor cap. This one has Herm, Fan and Common. You go Common to Herm for the Hermetic Compressor and Common to Fan for the Fan. Uh, we won't go into that one yet, I think I've already done a video on them, multi-caps. But internally, these two are the same. These two terminals are bridged between each other and these two are. So, in this case, when we um, wire the compressor up, remember to be very careful with AC voltages. It's, in this case, it's 240, 50 cycles per second, or 50 hertz. Deadly voltage, so don't mess around with it. And make sure that the plug's out of the wall and in your pocket when you play with it, if you've never done this before. Like, if you just want to use it as a experiment, a vacuum pump, that sort of thing, and you've never done it before, make sure that you ground to the compressor body which is this wire here uh, it is an electric motor if you don't ground an electric motor the whole metal casing will float at line voltage if one of the windings is short to the metal casing so always ground it and preferably use an rcd uh, i'm not a big fan because a lot of the time they uh, kill my experiments but a lot of the time everything else i run normally is on an rcd because if something goes wrong i know it'll trip out and tell me that something's wrong so they're not a bad thing. So make sure your ground is grounded to the compressor body. Neutral can go straight up to common. Sometimes it goes through a, th a thermal switch or something, but that's dependent on the compressor manufacturer. Um, some, part, some people put common to the cap, but it's alternating current. It goes both ways, it doesn't matter. There's no polarity to it apart from where your circuit breaker is which is usually on the live. I have live going to the cap and all the other business in the switch or pressure switch and all that sort of thing. Some people will beg to differ, but if you've got your, um, your breaker on your um, live and nothing on the neutral, just have your neutral go into common and use your live for all the other work. So neutral can go to common. In this case, it is this pin here. So that would go to one side of the capacitor, or sorry, not one side of the capacitor, one side of line, but we have to look at the um, capacitor for running the compressor because you've still got two other terminals to go to. 
So for your capacitor, we'll have live come across here to one terminal on the capacitor. These are bipolar. It doesn't matter which way you wire them. They do not have a positive and negative like a DC capacitor. DC will always have a black stripe or a marking on one side or a negative and a positive. These don't. These are AC capacitors. They don't care which way they go. Like I said before, AC current versus direction periodically. So you have live going to capacitor. Um, you can have a switch or something in there to break the circuit, a pressure switch or a temperature switch or whatever you want. Just a mains on off switch, a 10 amp on off switch. So you've got live going to the cap and then you can go from cap to run on the same one. So run gets 240 volts mains but you do not want to have that going to start because the start winding only wants enough charge to get the motor running and then just keep running. If you supply it with constant amps and, and voltage you actually burn the start winding out so that's why the cap's there because it'll send a I suppose an emulated phase to the start to get the motor running. It's like three legs trying to run. Um, the three legs just stall or get stuck if it doesn't have uh, a break in the phasing. I won't go into too much detail since this is supposed to be a, a video for dummies really but if you get home and uh, you've messed up and lost your lost your um, your wiring and everything it's all broken and cut up well this should help get you out of a bit of trouble but again I don't advise people play with uh, mains voltage just out of the blue but if you have to and you, you feel competent enough go for it. So that should uh, hopefully clear things up. And like I said before, that's just these terminals here. One, you disregard one of the um, extra terminals, don't use that for anything, and just have one go up to start. And that'll give you your um, phase emulation to get the motor running. Without that, the motor will just sit there and heat up like a heating element. It won't do anything. So you have to have power through there to run, bridged off the solid connection, and then also going through the capacitor, which is just a series of plates. In this case, they're a um, polymer film and aluminum foil. And um, yeah, that gives you a phase emulation to start and it's just enough to get the motor running and then away it goes. So yeah, there you go. I hope that helps clear things up a bit. I know this is impromptu, but I really don't have time tonight. I've got plenty of other stuff on my mind, but yeah. It'll give you some uh, idea on how to get out of trouble with a hermetic compressor. I'm not going to wire this one up and try and run it, even though I could as a, as a single phase compressor, oh, sorry, a three phase compressor. It won't be happy with me. Because um, contrary to the testing a single phase compressor, these ones here, every single combination on here will be the same. So, like it's two ohms, two ohms, two ohms, and every time I swap around, it'll always be that reading if it's a healthy three phase compressor. Whereas a single phase compressor might be 1.5, 6, and then 7.5 between the two. Just off the top of my head, it's probably a completely wrong ratio, but you get what I mean. So there you go. Crash course in uh, wiring a compressor. Thanks for watching, guys and girls. Uh, stay tuned for lots more. I've got a bit coming on this weekend and other stuff, so yeah. Hope you all enjoy it. I know I might be wrong on one thing, don't be afraid to point it out, but yeah, just play safe with mains current. Make sure it's grounded and uh, have fun because these things make awesome air pumps and vacuum pumps. But be careful of rotaries, they do run hot, and if you run them too long without, sub, without refrigerant cooling gases going to them in a normal system, they will overheat. They are not meant for duty cycles of, say, an air compressor. The gases going back to them are supposed to be cold, chilly. This pipe's supposed to be sweating like a beer can when you get gases going back to it to cool it down. Uh, it won't have that as an air compressor or a vacuum pump, so don't expect to be able to run them all the time. Um, yeah. And of course, you do have um, oil inside them. They are, do have a permanent oil fill. And yeah, if you try and braze on them in an oil filled line or something, you can get a fire, but that's very rare that that happens. Anyway, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.